Welcome to another video on Vue.js and specifically on Vue.x. This video is part of a series and in the first video of the series, I already had a little starting project to which you can find a link in the video description where we already added Vue.x and a central store and state here. The code to the finished project of that first video as mentioned can be found in the video description. In this video here, we're going to refine this a little bit and add some best practices starting with getters. Now what is that and how do we use it? We'll see it in a few seconds. So what are getters and why would we need them? Right now, if you have a look at the two components I'm using in the project, registration, where we can register a user, and registrations, where we can see all registrations, we're always fetching the registrations or the user array here in a computed method, in a computed property, I should say. And there is nothing wrong with that, but we can do better. We can outsource this logic into our store so that this code gets even shorter, that we don't have to filter here in the registration.view file, for example. Why would that be beneficial? Imagine an application where we had another component which also needs a list of all registered or unregistered users. Then we would simply have to duplicate this code and duplicating code is never a good idea. Instead, outsourcing this filter into the store and then simply somehow getting the list of filtered users would be much better. And this is what a getter can do for us. So how do we define getters then? In the store file where we have the state, we simply add a new property and surprisingly, it's called getters. Now getters is an object, a JavaScript object, and there we simply define any name. This is totally up to you. Now let's name it regis excuse me, unregistered users. This is a fitting name since I want to get back all unregistered users. This simply is a method. And here, like in a computed property, I pa pass the code or I execute the code which defines what unregistered users are and which in the end gives me back a list of unregistered users. And this is important, a getter always needs to return something and this is kind of obvious if you have a look at the name, a getter, it gets something. And here I want to return the, the state. The convenient thing is Vuex, which is a package we installed, passes the state to each, get, to each getter defined in my getters object here. So I can receive the state here as an argument. Again, this is passed automatically by Vuex. And therefore I can then simply say return state users. And now I'm just going to copy my filter code here from my computed property. Let's add it here. So now this is returning a list of unregistered users. Now, how do I use the getter in my component then? Here, I can simply define a computed property as I already do, and I need to use a computed property for this. And there I still access my store, but now not the state directly, but instead the getters. And here, the unregistered users. This is the name I gave this getter. Not like a method, just like a property. Now, if we save this, we should see that the application still works. We have the list, and I can still do the same as before, but we took the logic for filtering for getting this list and removed it from this component and instead put it into the store, the place where it should be. So this is already an improvement. Now we can do the same for registrations. Here I actually have two computed properties. So I can set up my store getters here too. So Besides the unregistered users, I'm also interested in all registrations. Here I also get the state, as I do in all getters, and I simply return state registrations. So no super awesome logic here, but still, it's something we can use or we need. So this is my registrations. And then the total number of registrations. I can also get that here. So I can simply say total registrations, whatever you like. Also get the state here and then return state registrations length, just to show a different way of using this, this uh, registrations. So now I do have my 
three getters. I'm already using the first one. Now let's use the second and third one too. And I still do it the same way as in the registration.view file. Set up a computed property. I already do have that. But there, access getters and now registrations. Now here, unlike in the first case, it's less obvious that we save super much space. But it's the better practice of using a getter for accessing the state than directly accessing the state. Getters total registrations would be the right getter here. With that, let's save it and let's have a look. If I reload the app, looks good to me. Works the same way as before. Here's another little improvement. If you have multiple getters or you're using multiple getters in one component, as we do here in the registration.view files, there actually is an easier way to quickly map those getters to computed properties. Because right now you have to create a computed property per getter and that can quickly become very annoying. Therefore, Vue.js gives you a nice little helper. We can, Vue.x I should say, we can import it and it's called map getters in curly braces from the Vue.x package. Now map getters, as the name suggests, allows us to map our getters. So here in the computed property in my view instance, in this component, I can now say map getters Execute it like a method and this gets either an array or an object depending on whether you want to keep the name of the getter in the store or want to assign it to a different name in your component. Now I will show the array first. Here you would simply list all the getters you want to use. So for example the registrations getter simply add it as a string. This is important as a string this is very important as a string to the map getters array and do the same for the total registrations. Now here I want to map them to different names though because for total registrations I just want to use total in this, in this component. In order to map it I have to pass an object instead and here I simply have my name first, so the name I want to use in this component, for example registrations and then as a string again the name in the store, the name of the getter. Here total, this is the name I want to use in the component and then the name of the getter, total registrations was the name we were using in the store. This one here, we just copied so that I don't have any typos, looks good. Now I can get rid of that, don't need to see me call in here. And now this is not a correct syntax here. Map getters is a method and here we're inside an object. Map getters gives us back an object. So what I can do is simply set map getters to be the value of this computed property. Computed, a property in a view component, simply expects to get an object and this will return us an object. An object with those mapped getters. And as a side note, if you would have used the array without mapping it manually to different names, behind the scenes it would still have given us a an object where we have the names mapped. It's just that name and getter name would be the same then. So with this, if we save this, reload this again, still works. So that still looks good. So that is a little convenience method if you have multiple getters to map. Now, what is if you have additional computed properties though? Because map getters takes up your whole computed property this computed property space in your instance, so to say. So if you had any other computed property not related to a getter, how would you add it? You can conveniently add it when using ES6 syntax. In this case, you do have the spread operator. And this is this operator, three dots. What this will do is it takes the object, again, map getters, returns an object in the end, and simply pulls out the properties in this object and distributes them in this parent object, this object here. So it gets the properties out of the object returned by map getters and puts them into the computed property object, thus allowing us to add additional computed properties. Yeah, there is a typo, but this is what it allows us to do. But right now it would not work because this spread operator is not supported by this view CLI setup as of now. We need a special package to support it. So here 
I will simply install this by running npm install dash dash save dev because it's a development dependency. And then it's called Babel. Babel is the transpiler transpiling our ES6 to ES5 code. Babel preset stage two because it's a stage two feature. The ES specifications are kind of published in stages. So with that added, I also need to add the Babel RC file. Here we need to add a new array holding this stage two preset we just installed. This will allow the app to compile correctly, though you need to restart the npm run dev process because we added something, we changed the build process. So with that, you see it now works again. And now you're seeing the full power of getters, including the map getters method to conveniently get access to multiple getters and map them to your own properties. Keep in mind, this is only an option. You can of course also just map it manually as we do it here in the registration.view file. In the next video in this series, we're going to have a look at mutations, a better way of changing the state because the way we're doing it right now isn't really the most optimal one.